down 17, entering the fourth quarter. What are you guys thinking, and how do you explain what happened? And have, like, what got into you guys there? You give it to me. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, man. Uh, you know, down three scores, down 17 points going into the fourth. Um, it's obviously not where we wanted to be as a team. Um, uh, but, you know, at halftime, I believe it was 20 to 10. Uh, I just kind of, you know, just looked everybody in the eyes and told them, we ain't out of this. And this 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 game that we play, it's a crazy game. You're never out of it. Um, and like I said, I, I looked at every one of my teammates in the eyes and I told them that we can do this and, you know, let's do something to, to, uh, to tell our kids about. And, um, you know, defense stepped up when they needed to. They, uh, they played great in the second half. Um, the the O-line, you know, they played great. Um, they're just a tough group of guys, man. And I appreciate them for real, for real. Everything that they do. Um, because I think, um, you know, the game of football, that's the only position group in any sport that's facing away from a ball. Um, you know, so just having that trust, that continuity with them and um, just knowing that we're going to war with, the, you know, with all those guys, it's definitely a special moment to come, you know, to uh, come home with that wagon uh, wheel after about five, six years. So, <laughs> great win. Uh, what does it mean to... to um, you know, snap that streak. I mean, everybody knows about this rivalry. Um, to be able to, to get that, that trophy for the first time, like you said, you know, since. I knew, um, so I knew, like, the way the season was going, this is, you know, getting that will back was the best thing that we can do and win out from here. So all those guys who played before us, Whenever the uh, the program opened up, all the all the alumni guys, this is for them, you know, because they play hard and they play for that will. And me, my first year being here last year, also, you know, I didn't know much about it, but throughout practice, I like I like put it in my mind. I have to get this will back for this program. I have to get this will back for the community. I need to get this will back for the for the students and you know for everybody who, who believes in Akron football. So. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna. Yeah, I feel like winning that wagon wheel is, is exactly Zo summed it all up, man. It, it's huge for the community. It's huge for the team. It's huge for the school. Uh, you, there's a lot of history in this wagon wheel, and I didn't know myself up until last year after the game. I kind of realized how serious this was. So I caught myself last night just looking at the record between Akron and Kent, and it's decided by a small margin, like six, seven games or something like that. So I'm hoping that this is something that the future teams can build up off of, watch what we did and see and kind of the freshmen and sophomores on our team getting that feeling and taking the wheel and just carrying on this legacy that we just started again. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Um, I don't know if you guys know, uh, there were a lot of alumni, a lot of former players uh, on from Akron, like 15 years ago even, that have so much pride in the history of this program. How is it, I mean, you guys touched about it a little bit, and I don't know if you guys talked to any of the alumni or former players, but how does it feel to just give them that relief that they know that the wagon wheel is, is in the confines of Akron, that, you know, their efforts, just, they're, they're not dismissed. How does that feel? All you guys can answer it. Let's start with DG. All right, it's amazing because, you know what I'm saying, you, you've seen how the, this season has gone so far, so, Wins like this, it may be a small win, but it's, it's a big win for us, especially for the community. Uh, just happy to put it back in its rightful place. You know what I'm saying? And all the disrespect, like, we've been feeling a lot of disrespect coming from Kent the whole year, especially after last year. It was a close game. We've been feeling all that disrespect. It's just been building up. We just had to hurry up and dare that. Lorenzo? I mean, it's a great feeling getting the wheel back. Um, I go to church here at Chapel One, and there's a couple of alumni that uh, that go there. So these past two Sundays, I went to church, and that is all they were talking about. Okay, we got Kent State, we got Kent State. Gotta get the wheel back. Gotta get the wheel back. And and like I just know, like hearing it from those guys, that it actually means something to the alumni. And then I'm just I'm just thankful to have it back and to and to give those guys a relief and you know and live off their dreams also. So, Jeff. Yeah, um, you know, I feel like that they kind of summed it up pretty well. But, um, um, 
you know, obviously our record and these past couple of seasons haven't been what, you know, the community wasn't what we wanted and all that. And we're very aware of that. And um, you can't really look in the past. You just got to keep looking, you know, and uh, f forward. And, um, you know, we're building something special here. I, I know Coach Jomo is building something special here with his culture and, and, and everything that goes into that. Um, and, you know, personally, I've been here the past year and a half, two years, you know, uh, uh, for these past two seasons. And I've obviously been in some rivalry games at my old school. And but just I didn't realize that this rivalry meant this much to everybody around. And like you said, the alumni and all that. And it just feels really good to get that wheel back where, it, you know, where it belongs. So. Uh, getting this will back for the community means a lot for us and uh, a lot for this community. And, um, you know, like everybody else said, got, got people, you're walking by, they said, uh, let's, let's get this will back, let's get it back. You know, I got my teachers, <laughs> my students saying, uh, are, are, we, are we going to get this will back? And I tell them, yeah, we're going to get it back. And, you know, me being a sophomore, you know, uh, I plan on it staying here. So also, I want to add on to that with you guys. Like, what's that do with setting like the foundation for the young guys in a program? And you know, like, because all of you guys are relatively new, right? And you guys learned about this wagon wheel. You learned about this rivalry. Wheel. What's that do going forward? What's that do for the rest of the season? Is how we approach the rest of the season and the games. And because I think, like Coach just talked about, we split that, that boulder finally kind of split today, right? And right. Now we can carry this momentum. So kind of t talk on that a little bit and what, it, what it's going to do for the, the young guys. Yeah, um, you know, I kind of see myself as a leader for the young guys. Uh, <clears throat> you know, just, you know, just keeping these guys up and, and you know, just, uh, I don't know, I'm at a loss for words. It, it, it's just an amazing feeling. Sure. So uh, I just send the foundation for this program, for for this community, for this city, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, I'll pretty much keep it short and sweet. Um, I think it's, uh, you know, like you said, for the younger guys. You know, I think this is something that they can build off of for sure. Um, I think it's just a, it's just a mentality thing. You know, realizing that um, it takes offense, defense, special teams, the sideline, getting juiced up. It takes all of that to to just win a game. Uh, let alone a big rivalry game. And um, like I said, I think this is something that the young guys can build off of. Um, I think that this can lead into next week for sure and uh, for the rest of the season, uh, something to build off of. So, um, you know, you know us, we're going to keep doing our job. We're going to keep working, staying humble, uh, just worrying about the things that we can control. And uh, really, that's all that we can do. And that's what we're going to do. So, Lorenzo. I'm I'm definitely thankful to be a part of this program. You know, I've been many places, but this team feels like a family to me. Like, there's no alter egos. Like, everybody comes in that locker room and they're just prepared and ready for practice. Like, there's no there's no big big money pots or outside things going on. It's just one focus is, and that's just to win. So, you know, my work ethic, DG's work ethic, my quarterback, my old linemen, we all put in our work every day, and these young guys see that. And there are some guys that put, they put more work in than others. But then now they know there's a reward for that. And, and Coach Moorhead has been saying this whole season, this is the best practice, the best scout team that I've, that I've ever had been a part at this program. And then, then like, like tonight, it shows why. So then those guys know what it takes. And for me, my feet are forever here. I'll be back visiting no matter how old I get, you know, because it's a family and I love it here. I think it's definitely huge for the young guys to see uh, just us pull this dub out because, you know, it's been a rough season so far. And especially uh, Coach Moore has, has been preaching since last year. Um, you got to win small before you can win big. So I feel like we took that next step of winning small and then we're going to have to take a few more steps, continue to work, continue to grind, everybody putting their work, everybody being bought in just to go from winning small to winning big. Hey, you mentioned rough season, and you know, it, 
takes a team that's together and a team that's you know that cares, a team that is you know has buy-in to come back from 17 down heading in the fourth quarter. So, how can you explain you know what you guys are made of? What allowed you guys to stick together and be that kind of team in a rough season when you had only won a game? Everyone on this team is tough, and you can see. Throughout our season, we've had a bunch of close losses, two overtime losses. So we didn't, we never, at no point in this game did we think we were like, oh man, the game's over, just chalk, chalk it up. No, never. Down 17, I hadn't even realized because we just kept cutting it. We just kept cutting it, and it felt good just to see everybody shine, just to see everybody do what they know they can do. Everybody do their job, and we finally completed as a team, offense, defense, and special teams. Uh, hey, just uh, Lorenzo. Coach Morag was talking about the belief was building, the belief was building, and then your touchdown run, like it was right there for you guys. What did you see on that play? What are you thinking? <laughs> so, um, so uh, I was just praying, you know, praying for my grandmother to uh, to uh, cover me. She passed away uh, in May, and then yesterday was her birthday. So it was like, you know, I came in this game with an extra – extra energy and you know I just had faith in my teammates I had faith in my old line um that, that so that big run actually came off with Tyler's block um uh, uh he uh basically blocked the man head up I kind of lost my foot in came off him and then all I seen was daylight man so it was it was it was, it was definitely trusting my old lineman and, and it felt good and then you were joking earlier. I mean, you aren't you aren't known as the as the you know dynamic dual threat guy. <laughs> but but hey, the, the touchdown run. And coach was explaining what the call was and everything. How did it unfold from from your vantage point? Yeah. Um, you know, first I, I just want to give credit, uh, just give all the credit to the O line. You know, on, on that last drive. You know, they're battling their tails off for the whole game, um, and it takes a lot for them. You know, to to uh, get the job done, and um, they're very nitty gritty. They're tough. They're strong, um, and all that kind of stuff. But um, just taking you guys through the play, you know, just a classic uh, read option, read the end, uh, uh, just a triple option play. Um, so I snapped the ball, the uh, the end crashed, and then my read, who who took my flat route, um, was just outside, and you know I pulled it. I saw I saw a hole, and I, I stuck my foot in the ground, and I tried to run as fast as I can. <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, touchdown zips. You know th that's all that matters. And you know, I, I, I was just so happy. You know, uh, for my teammates and coaches and all the students and like you said, all the alumni that uh, that came out tonight. Um, we're just really happy to get the dub for them. So I, I know we talk about tough season as a team, but specifically you because you know three quarterbacks have played. I know obviously you guys love DJ and you got hurt. Um, <clears throat> And then you and Taj are playing. Uh, what does this do for you, for your – I'm sure you never lost belief, but what does it do for just your confidence? Is it gratifying it's just to be a part of a game like this yeah. and to get this done with everything that you need? For sure. You know, I, it, it definitely feels good, man. Um, you know, I've kind of been through a lot in my career. Um, I just try to do what I can. You know, everybody says stay ten toes, uh, ten toes down, tunnel vision, control what you can control, all that stuff. Um, and that's what I try to do every each and every day. Um, and that's ultimately all you really can do. Like I know it sounds repetitive, and everyone says that, and but it's the ultimate truth. And I just try to be a good teammate to all my teammates, and you know, just show them that you know I'm a leader, and that um, that we can ultimately do this. And like I said again, it. Uh, it was just a good game, man. You know, offense, defense stepped up when they needed to. Um, special teams did well. Um, so, yeah, man. Was the turning point, and anybody can answer this one, was the turning point that 16 play drive there in the fourth that really kind of was like, okay, we have cut into the lead. We got 16. You guys probably, or you got a 16 play, you know, yeah. and tire them out. You guys come over the defense and hey, we just we took it down the pole. We can do it again. Like for just sure. get the stuff. Like what was kind of going through that six, 16 play drive? For sure. Well, I actually didn't know it was a 16 play drive. That's actually crazy. Um, but um, yeah, I, I actually do think that was a turning point. You know, uh, certainly 
uh, to speak on behalf of our defense, you know, I know that they know that they didn't play the best game that they have all year in the first half. Um, but this game of football, it's a crazy game, like I said, and it's a tale of two halves. And they stepped up when they needed to in the second half. So um, I, I think that 16 play drive from the offense, you know, lit a spark in the defense for them to, you know, just ultimately get a stop. And then, like DG said earlier, um, we just kept cutting in half. You know, we're down 17. Let's, Let's get some points. Let's get a stop. Let's go on a drive, get some more points, Let, and let's get another stop. Um, and that's ultimately what we did today, and it ended up working out. So. And then I asked Coach Joe, you guys heard me ask this, that last drive, touchdown, or not bust, but you know what I mean. Like, you guys wanted to end it four, four quarters. You guys didn't want no regulation or overtime, right? Six points. We were trying to get six points. We, we we're not trying to go into overtime. You know, we've, we've obviously been in that situation a couple of times this year, and it hasn't worked out for us. Um, but, you know, Coach Jomo always, you know, tells us and preaches us to finish. Um, and, you know, we've lost a game by seven, a game by six, a game by three, and I can keep going on. Um, you know, but as a team today yeah, and as a whole, um, we finished, and, you know, that's all that matters. So. I want to uh, also add on to um, another great performance from um, Josiah. You know, he's a he's a scary person, um, literally. But you know, he he showed up today, and and you can tell like throughout the week he was just focused. Like he wasn't talking to nobody. It was it, like it was kind of weird. Like I'm like, yo, what's up with you? Like he wouldn't say nothing. But then I can see why, because like this game, he showed up and then he he did his thing, man. 103 yards. I'm, I'm going to add on to that. Well, praise to Josiah because a lot of people do not know his story. Um, he, broke his, he broke his leg last year against Michigan State, and that was really tough for him, so he was out the whole year. That dude has one of the hardest work ethics I've seen ever. He's in the training room at all times, in the tubs, getting work on whatever may be tweaked at the time. Um, he had a little hamstring thing hurting him a little bit. He worked that all the way off. Uh, he's getting extra catches after practice. He's getting extra catches after walkthrough. He's one of them guys that's in there watching film. He gets in early to look at the plays. We're in the hotel right after the meetings. He goes, sits in the lobby, looks at his plays. Like He's he's really a workhorse. And the stats show it. His game is showing it. And I'm positive that dude is only going to keep going, going up and up. For sure. He tried to get back healthy for this game last year. Yeah. Broke his <laughs> that just did. shows the type of guy he is. It's crazy. Yeah. But you got to love him. Yeah. yeah. You got to love has, him. He has a passion. <laughs> a passion unlike any other. Uh, Jeff, um, you know, you have a running back in Lorenzo that has 100 yards. You have two wide receivers uh, that go over 100 yards as a quarterback. And your offensive line was fantastic today as well. Absolutely. Is someone who only started a few games. Again, we talked about the, the three quarterbacks starting this year. How satisfying do you have to feel as a quarterback that you know you got to lead your team on the field? You guys played pretty much the best offensive game numbers wise all year. Yeah, uh, it, it, you know, it definitely feels good that we got the dub. You know, uh, we got some good stats all across the board. We got Zo with 155 total yards, DG with 104, Sia 103, Blake with 92 total yards, and I think that's a testament, you know, to this guy right here uh, sitting to my right and our whole line. You know, they played their tails off today, man. And that's the O line is not an easy position to play in this game. It's not. And you know, we got all the faith in them. Um, and you know, just my job as a leader, as a quarterback. You know, the way I look at it, you know, I'm not the best athlete out there, obviously. Um, you know, I feel like Coach Jomo and Coach Fess and all the offensive staff. They put together a great game plan for us offensively, you know, just to get the ball in space to the playmakers, you know, um, and just have them make plays and, you know, take my check downs, you know, when they're dropping out and when everything gets gray. Um, we ran the ball well. Um, so, you know, I just think it, it's a domino effect. You know, if one thing works, the other thing can complement off that. That'll work. And then once that happens, you know, you got these numbers right here sitting in front of me. So, um, it's definitely, it's definitely a good win, man. You know, we're always talking about the uh, Kent State wagon wheel rivalry, um, five, six years, whatever it is. But I know it's here now, and we're going to do our damnest to, to uh, keep it here. So, boys, enjoy the night.
Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank our, you guys. Our, our will. Our will. <laughs> Thank you guys.